I'm Andy Chanley from 88.5 FM, and I welcome you into our video conference interview series here at home. And today joining us, Eric Early from Blitz and Trapper. Hey, Eric, how you doing? Hey, I'm doing good. Good to join. Now, where are we talking to you? You're in Portland? Yeah, Portland. Portland. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, sheltering in place in, in Portland, Oregon. Uh, the new album is called Holy Smokes Future Jokes. Comes out on 9-11, and uh, you've been hearing the, the song masonic temple microdose number one on 88.5 fm uh a lot to unpack there <laughs> uh let's just drill down uh first on, on the name um uh, on one hand i think it's a microdose so you know not too much trouble but it's only number one um where, 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 where tell us about that song and how it uh, came together uh you know it was kind of a bunch of different ideas um when i was a kid in high school, there was this weird old, like, little town out on in the sticks called Xena, and they had this weird temple there. And as kids, we'd go and mess around and try to get in the windows and futz around in the cemetery and stuff. Uh, so it was kind of based on that. Also, I lived for a long time in Portland, right by a giant Masonic temple. And uh, we were always hanging around there and trying to figure out how to get in. <laughs> you couldn't get in, though. So uh, based in somewhat uh, scattered uh, real life childhood experiences, um, the, uh, the album doesn't come out for quite some time. Now, I'm guessing that you had a different plan entirely for 2020 uh, up to a, a few months ago. Uh, you'd go out, you'd tour the summer, the album comes out in the, in the fall and, and everything goes as planned. How have you been dealing with the, the disappointments uh, of rearranging your, your expectations? Uh, you know, yeah, we were really, we were going to, we were going to go out in the fall for a few weeks. Um, we weren't going to tour super extensively, uh, just two weeks here, two weeks there kind of thing. Um, but yeah, it is a bummer. We haven't toured in a few years, so, um, it would have been nice to get out and see the fans. Right. Uh, But yeah, I mean, it is what it is. So what have you been doing, uh, in the meantime, I'm, I'm guessing a combination of, uh, a bunch of you know idle stuff, but but also maybe making some music now. How's how's the last couple of months treated you? I actually work full time. Uh, I'm a case manager at a homeless shelter, like a twenty four seven. That's right. I heard about this. Yeah, so that's I do that every day. I mean, today I got a day off, um, but I generally work there nine hours a day, five days a week. So I actually haven't been playing any music for quite a while. <laughs> so in the work that you've been doing with the homeless there in in Portland. Um, I can only guess that the situation that is difficult for you and me and most of the people watching this is compounded many times over for people that are, that are homeless and and don't have resources. Uh, yeah, it's interesting. Um, well here, here in Portland, we haven't been hit super hard by the virus. Um, and, and the homeless population really hasn't either to be honest. And we have outreach teams. We've been heading up the outreach teams that go into the camps and uh, pull people out who are at risk, put them in hotels, stuff like that. So we've had a lot of contact with uh, a lot of the more at-risk folks, but we haven't had any outbreaks really. I I look around Los Angeles, Eric, and see the, the homeless situation only Seemingly, you know, it's it's just my anecdotal, uh, you know, look around the town. But it just seems like it's getting worse. Like it's not uh, abating that it's it's you know a crowd is drawing a crowd, and uh, the difference in wage equality and so many other opportunities is that that crevasse is getting wider and wider. What's what's the solution? <laughs> I, I hope you can solve it for us here in, in this fifteen minute interview. I don't know. I mean, it's the same here in Portland. It's a problem that seems to just be growing. And I mean, a lot of it has to do with the, the virus. I mean, the virus, the economy. I mean, there's so, it's the most complicated systemic issue. I don't even know. <laughs> like I deal, I deal with it in the like very detailed, like in the, in the small details of it, like getting housing. Like I'm a lead uh, housing case manager. So I deal with like getting people into housing who've been on the street for a while. Um, so there are definitely all kinds of systematic, like systemic gaps in the system that I've seen. But then there's the bigger, more general issues, like you say. And I mean, 
you'd have to tackle so many issues at once. I really don't know. <laughs> well, um, let's get back to talking about your, your music for a couple of minutes. I, I read that your, your songwriting influences are uh, Bob Dylan, Neil Young, Jay Farrar, a Sunvolt, Michael Stipe. If I were going to sit down and make my list of, of my songwriting heroes, it would be awfully close to that. Um, it, it's uh, just the, the music that you, you know, grew up listening to in, uh, and, and listened to in, in college or, or how are you drawn to those, those sources, those yeah. influences? And the music that was going on when I was in high school and college. Yeah. I mean, or at least it's the stuff that I got into. I mean, yeah, initially I was getting into, yeah. Uh, you know, REM, uh, Sunville, Wilco. Yeah. A lot of the Americana stuff that was going on in the nineties. I remember 1985. My sister gave me a copy of uh, Life's Rich Pageant, and yeah. it was it was it was the first I had heard of of them. I'm you know living in Greenwood, Indiana, not exactly a you know a hotbed of of uh, of you know a cool music insight. And uh, and then I go to Purdue, and you know REM you know had just come around in concert, and and all the tickets were sold, and I missed out. It, that was a watershed moment for me, though, when you start. Uh, you know, you, 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 groups of friends coagulate who have similar interests and, and you widen your interests. That's a, a pretty heady time for a kid and, and pretty formative. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. What about your, your music uh, making? Uh, when you go and play, you play what? Uh, keyboards, guitar, harmonica, you sing, you're the, the multi-instrumentalist. Where did you get, what was your entree into music to begin with? What was your first instrument? Uh... My first instrument was a, just an old banjo that my uncle had built for my dad. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. A banjo that he had built? Yeah, my uncle built it. Yeah. Uh, uh, just out of? He had a kit. Or I don't even know. He's a craftsman. <laughs> it's amazing. He, he's a craftsman. Yeah. So he built, he built all kinds of stuff. He built uh, hammer dulcimers, all kinds of weird stuff. Yeah. So him and my dad were pals and he built that. So I, le I learned to finger pick on that at a pretty early age, five or six. Um, and then my dad taught me guitar. Wow. Do you remember the first time that you played a song in front of people and you had the distinct realization that, hey, they like that? <laughs> uh, I don't know, that's a good question. I mean, I do remember a piano recital when I was like 10 that did <laughs> not, it did not go well. I had a piece I had learned. What, what was the piece? I don't even remember some little classical piece, you know, <laughs> classical piece. I sat down to play it and it just went away out of my brain. And I just, I just riffed. I just messed around on the keyboard for like five Art minutes. and soul, da 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 da. <laughs> like, which is what I do anyway now. So yeah, maybe that was the first time I really hit on the, the magic. I don't know. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> you know I think, and then I think I fled. You know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I read somewhere that uh, as you were writing this, and this may be apocryphal, I don't know, but uh, as you were writing this, you had a couple of things on your mind, including uh, this uh, George Saunders book of a couple of years ago, this uh, Lincoln in, in the Bardo. Um, yeah. is, is that right? Yeah. yeah. So for people that don't know, it's a, a, book, a novel that was written a few years ago about, uh, that's somewhat based in fact of, of Lincoln uh, after his son uh, died at a young age while he was in office, he would go to his crypt and, and, and visit him. And a lot of this happens in the, you know, uh, in the between realms. But how, how did that influence this album? Uh, it got me obsessed with the Bardo Thadol, the Tibetan Book of the Dead, which is what that book is riffing on. Because the story... Uh, takes place, you know, it's Abraham Lincoln, but also his son is there. His son is, is dead, but he's hanging out there and he's, he's stuck in the intermediate state. And so I don't know that it really resonated with me, this sort of uh, idea of acceptance and humility and passing on, you know? Uh, and so I, I read the Tibetan book of the dead and got really obsessed with it and all the stories in it and the, and the sort of way of looking at humanity, life and the mind through that book. What are you reading right now? What am I reading right now? What's uh, on your, your summer reading list? Man, I haven't been reading much. I've just been working, honestly. 
Uh, man, I don't think I'm reading anything right now. I've been slowly reading uh, an Irving book, John Irving. Um, I can't think of the name of it right now. <laughs> so what's the, the plan from, from here on out musically? Um, you know, is it uh, just to kind of put everything on a back burner and not let it stress you out? And when the opportunities come along, you'll, you'll take advantage of them or? Pretty much. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm going to play music when it, when I can, like you say, uh, I'm not writing music right now. Uh, it's one of those times I think for everybody where you're just going a day at a time, just putting one foot in front of the other. And so, yeah, I'm working at the shelter all the time. Um, and at some point, hopefully we'll be able to do a few weeks on the road and play some songs with people. Yeah. But one foot in, fr in front of the other, uh, a song from Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Yeah. As you'll remember, I, I, I have to ask you, Blitz and Trapper um, is a name that's kind of, you know, it's like uh, Rudolph Crucifier. Uh, where, where, did the, where did the name come from? Man, it's been so long. I don't know. I've heard so many weird stories about where that name comes from. None of them are true. I, I don't know. I'm sure there's drugs involved and, and probably... One of the good stories I told was about a trapper keeper, a Christmas themed trapper keeper. I have <laughs> trapper keeper. I haven't thought of those in a while. That I would keep love letters for my girlfriend in. Um, yeah, so <laughs> we'll go with that. Uh, <laughs> last uh, couple of questions here. Um, if you weren't doing music, do you think that that this would be your vocation, public service, helping helping people, or or is there another vocation that uh, when you're rocking on your front porch, you'll, you'll have regrets that you didn't do. Not really, man. I really like what I'm doing now. I, I could probably see myself continuing to do this and playing music on the side, to be honest. <laughs> I enjoy it. I, I do. Yeah. Well, it's, it's a, a noble pursuit and, and, you know, bless you for, for doing all that. Um, I know that uh, the people that you, you touch every day, there's, there's a real satisfaction, I'm sure, in going as well as, you know, um, disappointment and, and, and anxiety, but uh, I'm sure you have a lot of satisfaction at the end of the day that you, you've helped people to get through their, their crises. Yeah, I think so. I, there's a lot of frustration yeah. <laughs> too, <laughs> but sure. yeah. The bureaucracy of it all. It feels good, especially in the quarantine to still be having connections with people all the time, you know, cause it's an essential work situation. So, you know, a lot of people don't get the contact with others, but I, I have a lot of contact with others. So that's, that's been really great. Yeah. Um, and last question, uh, what's the, uh, what's the best meal you've, uh, made for, uh, yourself or your family there in, in quarantine? Oh man. Well, we've been crock potting a lot, <laughs> ah. a lot of barbecue chicken. Nice. Yeah. Throw it in there in the morning before you go to work and you come home in the evening and yep. it's the way to do it. Slow. It's the way, it's the way a working family does it. I love it. <laughs> Well, great to get to know you a little bit, uh, Eric. Uh, you know, you've been in the station before, and I hope when all of this blows over that that happens again. You come in for another live session. But in between now and then, this is the next best thing to uh, get the word out about the album that'll be out uh, uh, on the 11th of September. And the song, of course, you're hearing now on uh, 88.5 FM, Masonic Temple Microdose Number 1. Uh, all the best to you, and, uh, and, and good on you for the work you're doing there on the streets of Portland. All right. Thanks, Andy. All right. Take care. Yeah, all right, see ya.